Monday, February 5th, morning commission meeting. We have Christine Hawes in from the auditor, uh, Albany Commissioners, the county attorney present. Um, first off on the agenda, um, I have asked, or we have asked the uh, insurance company to stop in and um, let us know what their take is on the publishing of um, the wages and salaries of the big one. I know we have a lot of people upset about that, as are we. And uh, Michael Bowditch is our insurance rep. Michael, you want to kind of give an update on where we're at and what the process is, please? Gladly. Michael Bowditch with Consolidated Union. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I apologize for the circumstances of the meeting, uh, but I do want to address a couple key issues. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank the commissioners for being proactive in the way they've handled it. They reached out to me immediately <coughs> to a chance to respond on your behalf. So kudos to them. They did offer to immediately step in and say, hey, we want to make sure we take care of our employees and provide a chance to provide you know, something to offer credit monitoring service. And I have advised them not to do so at this time, okay? There's a clause in the policy that could jeopardize coverage if they attempt to uh, adjust or amend the, the coverage of the, of the policy by adjusting a claim on your behalf. And we don't want to jeopardize the coverage. We have submitted a claim to the insurance company. There are potentially four areas of coverage that coverage could apply. General liability policy, public officials errors and emissions policy, <coughs> uh, public official bond, and a cyber liability policy. I can't tell you today which area of coverage will apply because I don't know how or if your information will be used, okay? But our hope is, our thought is, that there will be coverage. And we think that that's gonna be the case. A couple things that I do wanna address. There are things that you can do to help yourself. I don't envy the position that you're in, but there is a silver lining, and there are things that we can do to be proactive. And I hope that you guys will all be proactive in taking advantage of this, because it can be a learning opportunity. Uh, every one of you can go out and lock your, your, your personal credit score. There are three separate credit monitoring services, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. You can go to their three websites. You can lock your own personal information. And nobody could be able to apply for a loan, credit card, or information, including yourself. That's something that you can do to be proactive. The other thing that I would ask you to do is keep track of any expenses or costs associated with it. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and get an attorney because that's not costs are associated with this circumstance. If you have negative outcome or if you have something bad that comes about or if you have expenses related to the direct cause of your information being published, that's something that could be potentially reimbursed or, or compensated for in the future as a result of the claim. There is an adjuster that was assigned as of this morning. We found out about this on Thursday. It took me a minute to get some phone calls. I made three phone calls to the insurance company on Friday. There's an adjuster that has been assigned. I'm awaiting the conversation with them. So we do anticipate there being coverage. I'm not gonna commit to anything at this time. There are potentially four areas that coverage could apply depending on how and if information is being used. But I have to wait until I talk to the adjuster to determine what the course of action is. <coughs> the insurance company, on behalf of the county, We'll communicate back to commissioners to have, have a game plan in place to respond on your behalf. And we will communicate back through whether it's commissioners or HR or however <coughs> to make sure that you guys are best taken care of as best we can. Does anybody have any questions? At that time, at this time, that is the best. I mean, I can give you the claim number. I printed 25 copies of the information. I'll be honest, you guys would be wasting your time to call the 800 number and go to the switchboard and get to you. And if everybody calls the adjuster and tries to drown in the information, it's going to be counterproductive. I'm not going to say I won't give you the information if you're adamant about having it, but I'd ask for a little bit of patience because it's a very fresh and new circumstance. Yes, ma'am. So I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. So basically, if the commissioner's asked you, the insurance company, you, not you personally, but you, the insurance company, to have credit monitoring for all the employees because of the breach, then that would mess up one, basically mess up one of their other policies. So that's something that they, and you're not suggesting they do and they don't do, but if there is a breach, you think the insurance policy 
may or there, may not cover it? There are people that we're going to have absolute experts who only deal with this information. I can't give you names, but I'll give you an example of, of, a, of a similar type of claim that I dealt with a year and a half ago. The demand was $880,000, okay? I had three different attorney firms from out in New York City dealing with it. One was for HR and the PR side of things. One was negotiating with the terrorists of people whose information was jeopardized, and they were negotiating with them to try to prevent additional future damages. The third one was, was a forensic attorney accounting firm trying to figure out how and when the information was released. I mean, they're, they're, it, these people know the ins and outs. I mean, I, I know, this, you know the attorney doesn't know every detail of every law in the state of Indiana. These people only work in this segment of, of this coverage. They might come back to us and say, hey, you know what? We can't use this. These people can't use this information anyways. And, and to make these people happy, this is what we're going to do. But they, they'll know the ins and outs and the finite details. My job is to know coverage and how to facilitate claims and, and, and the coverage as it applies to counties and public entities. I, I don't know those details specifically. What I'm telling you is if we try to adjust a specific aspect of the claim, it could jeopardize another area of coverage. And I don't know what portion of coverage is going to apply. I have no doubt that your company can handle this type of you know, identity theft claim. I, that's not my question. My question is, so if the commissioners actually had you guys take out credit protection for all of us, it could jeopardize it. But really the main question is, so what if, no, they, if, took they, out if they took out credit monitoring themselves on their own accord, it could jeopardize what we do. The insurance company may step in and say, hey, we need to offer this to them automatically. And I don't want them offering it to you to jeopardize what they're going to do for you. So that's on the adjusters Correct. to do this, is to Absol see absolutely. if the insurance company will offer that Absolutely, credit absolutely. And, and, and like I said, they're professionals. They'll tell us whether or not what services need to be provided to those affected individuals. And, and I don't want you to think that because you're just an employee, this isn't uh, an issue because the county's policy is very robust. It is a first party liability issue, but also third party. Third party is, and I don't, I know I should know your name because I've met, is it Cassie? It's Casey, yeah. Casey, mm -hmm. we've met before, I used to live here, nonetheless. Um, you're not named as an insured in the policy as a you, the county of Fulton, Casey, but you, third party, could be have liability as a result of damages from what the county has done. Make sense? Absolutely. And so yes. the county's policy is very robust in the fact that we can provide coverage first party and or third party. And so in that regard, we don't want to take a chance of jeopardizing what we could do. My concern is that the credit, what, what I heard you just say is that that credit monitoring option won't come into play until the identity theft has occurred. I, I didn't say that. We're going to let the insurance company adjuster determine at what point or if and when that is offered. If and when they determine if that is offered, then the Pitt the Commissioner will have an option to do something if they choose to do so thereafter. What kind of timeline does that look like? Considering we're five that, yeah. days in and you've got I can't businesses answer that. It, it should be it, it should be probably within, I'm gonna say a week to 10 days. So I can lose all my money within a week to 10 days. I, I, highly, doubt, I highly doubt that's gonna happen. Well, you highly doubt. Like You're just an insurance guy that doesn't want to charge these guys any more money. Like you hardly said, got it, but what happens, if, what happens if I lose my money? Like I said, there are If I lose my money, are you going to pay for it? Is the county going to get it back for me? There are things that, exactly, you, can not. Be, there are things that you can do to be proactive. But I have to pay for that. You cause the problem. Yeah. They cause, whoever, I don't care who it is. The county has literally caused a problem. And now you want me as an employee, whether I'm part-time, full-time or not, to pay for it and you as insurance because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings aren't willing to step up say you know what it's already been five days you guys let me get it to you now because you don't know if it covers so now i could be two weeks now i could be a month and what happens then all the money i had saved my retirement everything's gone what if i live paycheck to paycheck There's a problem. and then literally i go home I get a paycheck. Well, it's gone. It's gone. I got all my money I got saved. Then I got to get evicted. Are you going to pay for my apartment? Oh, my God. There's a process that has to take place, and we have to have a chance to let that process play out. But you're also talking two weeks, maybe a month. 
I, I never said that. We're going to do it. Or did you not just say ten days? We're, we're going to we're going to do it as fast as we possibly can. I was made aware of the circumstance on Thursday, and I sit before you on Monday to answer your questions. Thursday afternoon, late. So you can also go on TransUnion and do the lock, so nobody can get your access to your. I got paid for that. No, no you do not. Free. Free charge. Free. What's free of charge? To lock your to own lock your credit credit score. Mm -hmm. TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Mm -hmm. Now, could the commissioner have done something before they talked? And you did it. The it commissioners had no other other way of doing anything. I mean, it, it, they could have, but it would have potentially jeopardized the insurance company providing services. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you that, that whatever services they provided would be better. I will tell you that the company we're dealing with is Liberty Mutual, a Fortune 500 company, one of the largest insurance companies in the world, have some of the best experts you could poss money possibly can buy, and, and they're going to do their best to make sure that the, that the customers take care of it. Possibly the rest of our life are going to have that long. What's that? Unfortunately, I have been victim of identity theft myself. It's unpleasant for about six months. After you go through the process, you, you deal with it with the federal government, and they basically give you a new number instead of your social security number. It's called an FEIN PIN number. Once you get that new PIN number, it's like a new social security number and you deal with that for the rest of your life. That's what you file your taxes on and nobody ever looks back. I know that number probably easier and more readily handily than I do my social security number because I use it now my for- way. Now come on, <laughs> you and I both know. This is where I'm gonna interrupt you. You okay. can give me that number, but where's my history after that? That history doesn't carry along with you with that new number. You are now going into banks and you're explaining yourself to banks. Every time you think I'm alone, what has happened? And I understand this is a catch-22 situation, but you have to understand where they're coming from. They're coming from a standpoint that this was not by their choice, this was not by their own mistake, this was by a mistake from someone else. And that someone else was hired here to sit there and not only take advantage of protecting the constituents of the county, but the employees. The last four numbers, I don't care how you spin it, they're the last four numbers. When I call into a credit card company, what do they ask me for? When I go, go I go, oh, wait, let me have my chance. I go in and I ask for medical records. What are they going to ask me for? I go in to pay a utility bill. What are they going to ask me for? You can look up my name on GIS. You can look up my address. You can look up my phone number. 95% of the people in here have my phone number. So if I want to sit there and I want to get a hold of a credit card company and I want to try to make a change, I'm just giving them the last four. Is Rochester or Fulton County full of people that want to be malicious? No, but the world is. And you're right, 100%. This is an incident that whether it happened here at the county, it can happen outside of the county anytime, any day. It's upon us outside of the county, and I understand that. And, and, and Josh, I completely agree with what you're saying. And what I told you from the get-go is we don't know if these people are going to use this to take out credit cards, <coughs> file out health insurance claims, or even or if file a false tax it. return. Right. I gave you my personal experience. Yep. My personal experience was somebody used my credit card or my social security number to file a false tax return. My deal was with the federal government. I got a new PIN number the and PIN I never number. looked back. Right. Yes, there are other They're inconveniences. Top, yes. The silver lining, I hope everybody in this room learns something. I hope everybody is a little bit more proactive with their own personal finances. Does it suck? Excuse my friend, yes. Are we all gonna be a little bit more diligent? Did we all learn a little bit of something? Yes. Are these the cards that we're dealt with? Yes. Do we all have to deal with it? Yes. Why do you make it sound like it's our fault? I mean, you're doing it for us like a girl. Like, what the hell are you talking about? When we all hired in here for county employees, we trust the county with our information. We're doing much better. We now, sure now look at it. Well, it sounds like it's your guys' fault and you gotta do this, this, and this. No, hold on a minute here. That ain't right. And where, all, yeah. and where does the buck stop as far as any reimbursement should something happen? I mean, most of our department, our employees have second jobs. Where does that stop? Is it personal liability with credit or does they, will they be reimbursed for any business finances that you are going to be keep, compromised? You have to keep track of all your information and all your expenses and provide that to us when the time comes. So basically, you lose your money first. The insurance, if you want to go through the hoops, you make some money back. Most insurance policies aren't set out to make somebody rich. They're made to put somebody back like they were made before something bad happened. 
It's a reimbursement. It's a, it's, a, it's a put you back where you were before something bad happened. For that, I apologize. My job is to try to put you back in the event something bad happens. I hope nobody's had anything bad that's happened so far. Knock on wood, hopefully that continues to be the case. But the responsible thing for the commissioners to do, buy a good, reputable insurance policy. They have done that. Has anybody, can anybody in the room raise their hand and say, I've never made a mistake? Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, not trying to be, I'm not trying to be distasteful. We've all made mistakes. I, I don't know, who, I don't personally know who made the mistake at the county. I don't want to know. We all know. We okay. all know who made the mistake because when the folks were hired in, you had to fill out an application. When they were hired, they had to fill out all of the federal and the state paperwork just like everybody else does and guess what's on there? Confidential information. That confidential information was then relayed into a software system for the county for bookkeeping. There's only so many people who have access to that information. It's confidential. If I came in right now and I said, please give me Mr. Lewis's I-9 form, you know what I'd be told? You know what I'd be told. No, you can't have it, it's confidential. The problem is line number whatever, number four, number five, whatever, that had that social security number was related to a software system for the county. Then a report was generated and literally handed to the newspaper and said, please report this. Please publish it. No one in this room needs to learn anything based on that because we had nothing to do with it. The problem is that information was confidential. I don't, I'm assuming almost everybody in this room because it's a com unfortunately a commonplace thing, we've all received letters that have said, your information has been breached. We have taken it upon ourselves to get you credit monitoring. Please call this number, please go to this website, sign your name up, you know, we're monitoring this. If you have issues, call us. I've had that from MSU. I have had that from Blue Cross Blue Shield. I have had that from Optimus Specialty Pharmacy. These are huge names, just like Liberty Mutual. They took it upon themselves to contact me and say, your information was breached. We really apologize. The hackers got it. We have got you covered. It wasn't a, if you have issues, you know, please take responsibility for your own stuff. Do your own monitoring. And if you have issues, contact us. And we're going to wait two weeks later. It was. Generally, what I will tell covered. you is that you find out about those things about six months after it happened. So we're three and a half days in. I understand. Please be patient with us. Let us, and, and there will be an investigation by the insurance company to determine how and when and why so that they can figure out where coverage needs to apply. I'm just asking for a little bit of patience. <laughs> if we all work together, we'll get through the investigation faster and we'll make sure it done, is done as best we can. My only question? Yes, ma'am. Why didn't it stop at Rochester Sentinel? Like, why did it get published? Why didn't they question that? I would defer to the attorney because I'm, I'm, I'm not a publication expert. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. I was I was on vacation last week. I know that we received some emails regarding that fact. Is that correct, Brian? Yes. Okay. So whether dealt with negligence or intentional, the burden's now on us. We have no all. idea at this point. Okay. And um, this practice person not going to be held responsible for it. No, they only print what is given to them. Okay. They cannot edit or decide they didn't like that word and leave it out. So whatever was sent to them, they have to vote. They print. They have to send a proof back for print though, correct? They send a proof back that says, is this okay? Once that's approved, they print it. That's the process. Thank you. Was that expenditure report approved in the last commissioner's meeting? I'm sorry? Was that expenditure report approved in the last commissioner's meeting? I'm sorry, I didn't What expenditure? Um, by law that what is published with all the salaries and everything is actually the expenditure report for the previous year and by law the commissioners are supposed to approve that and then actually give that authorization of go ahead and publish it we approve of all these expenditures for the year I'll have to look back and see what was on, on the document for that expenditure I mean and we are doing there's a lot of, a lot of things at play behind the scenes here I mean, we have your guys back. We're doing everything we can legally. So I mean, don't think we're out here, you know, yeah, the part of it just sitting around. You guys are here. part of it too. Yes. You guys yeah, are I mean, out there too. We're, we're there just to expose you to all of it. We're all in the same boat. 
So, um, you know, and like I said, we have to defer to our legal team and the insurance on what they can, you know, what they recommend us to do. And there's only, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm way we're as frustrated as you are. How soon can we get uh, transcripts of the last meetings? Me, if you and Cliff okay that or not? On the website. I do not know. Oh. But I, I, I will. What did you say again? He was I want copies of that because if literally, if you guys agreed to it and she published it, are you guys? I mean, you three. I mean, you got to watch what goes out of the thing. That's a salary, and obviously the salaries and wages are. Yeah, well, dollars. salaries and wages are on there. So what are so what are our social security numbers? Yeah. So I, you. I don't know what's on there, Troy. Then so you, I'll if I'll you don't know what's on it, how? I mean, I'll have to look back at it. I. Are you asking about the ad, the expenditure for that ad? Mm -hmm. That ad has that ad was put in there. The Sentinel has not has not invoiced that yet. No, no, no. The, no, no. So we approve report the report. What she what she asked. You don't have it. It's not your like responsibility. Yeah. yeah. I knew the answer. I was just <laughs> wondering. <laughs> If the report was given to you like it's supposed to by law for you to approve before it was given to the set, like I said, I need to answer. I was just, maybe you shocked me. It's like, yes, we saw that. She has to publish that to the gateway. Yes, that's what she's doing. I know it's frustrating. Is there any other questions you guys have for us? I have a question for Holly. Um, you had mentioned, you know, the legal ads have to go and they can't alter them when they receive them, they being the Sentinel. When you look through previous years, there's some type of, I know I'm not using the right word, affirmation statement where it is confirmed that it is true and fact. This year's paper didn't have that. Does that hold any weight of the fact that it wasn't truly a legal ad then? Um, I, I don't know, I can't answer that without looking at it a little bit. That, are you saying it's the newspaper who says it's true and accurate or it's on the... No, normally in past publications, there okay. will be from a specific department a statement with their name and their position saying I so-and-so, political so-and-so, affirm that this is true and factual, blah, 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 blah. And that wasn't on there this year. I, I would have to look at that and see exactly what the statute talks about okay. them doing that. Brian? Yeah. Is the Sentinel taking that out of the paper or is it left in forever and ever in? Well, I, I, I've spoken with the prosecutor. Uh, I think, I think, uh, Somebody was reaching out to the Sentinel, the corporate office, and I think they're trying to redact that section of that link. So um, I don't know where that's at. Like I said, this is Monday morning. So I don't know. I haven't had a chance to talk to anybody yet. Um, I'm hoping that that would be something that any publication would have uh, some compassion for. And work with us on that. So it's my understanding that they're working on doing that. Brian, I, I did talk to Mike. Um, he indicated that he did reach out to the Sentinel, but I haven't spoken to him yet this morning to know kind of the details of that. But I know that, at least from Mike's perspective, he did reach out. Yeah. So, I mean, like, so there, there are a lot of things going on in the background that we're working on. So, I mean, we're not just. Please understand, we, we, we have your back, we're doing everything we possibly can to make this, you just fix the situation and, and, and There is no fix. Well, they're, they're, we're, we're doing all we can do. I mean, it's, we're doing the best we can do. to the future or whatever, how are you going to make sure that this doesn't ever happen again? Mm -hmm. There are no guarantees in life. No, how are you going to keep this employee from doing shit like this again? That's what we well, yeah. it, it, 
it's an elected official, and that's where you run into problems. That, that you have very little oversight on elected officials. That's not true. You can call Attorney General and get the things started. And early. there's it's probably some things like that yeah, going on. Yeah. Really. There are a lot of things in motion. Right? That's right. That's so right. Right. I don't know what to tell you guys. I, I mean, there's a lot of things in motion. So I, I we get, there's we just can't we can't say some stuff because legality reasons. There's a lot of things in motion. And we don't take it lightly. Uh, we don't. So uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what to say. I mean, we're, I mean, we're as, like I said, I'm so, yeah, we're, uh, we're as upset as you guys, and yeah, but we're, we're working on it. I mean, the other thing I do want to share with you guys, it's a terrible situation. I, I think <laughs> you have a question about credit kind of monitoring into the future. I think legally, they're, they're responsible for 12 months. So, I mean, you don't know if today you put your credit card into a gas reader that has a, a scanner on it that, that reads your credit card. I mean, that's something that, quite frankly, I mean, the attorney and I were talking about this. We don't know if your information gets compromised. We don't know if they got the information from this leak or if it was from something else. So really, when you talk about how you're gonna protect us into the future, some of that onus, I mean, that's why I keep talking about a silver lining. We're going to do everything we can, but I mean, you guys got to be responsible for your own stuff too. And and I mean, going forward, it can happen in 13 months, and the credit monitoring does you no good if it happens in 13 months. Do you follow me? No, I understand, and I think I think for the majority of people in here, it's not so much the fact of what it is; it's the fact it, of why. And it's and it's the cumulative basis yes. that was. 200 records at one time. And, and the one benefit, you're exactly right, that we do have is most companies would have been a corporate environment. None of us would have known about it. We would have seen it, but we would have known about what was going to be done for quite some time. Yeah. So I mean, as far as all of you addressing but, it. But if you're a public entity, and this was publicly posted in the newspaper. And if this was done intentionally, not on an accident, like getting fuel with the gas on. And that's, and that's what I tell you, I don't know if it's which one of those four areas of coverage because if it was intentional, I could tell you which area of coverage it's going to be under. Well, I think that's the biggest problem is we all know that our security, you know, our information is at risk, possibly from somebody reading the numbers off your card when you walk in a store. In this particular case, we know what the problem was. Yeah. One individual took confidential information off of federal and state documents out of an HR department, ran a report and faxed it to a newspaper and asked them to publish it. That is something everybody in this room had zero problem. control over. That's the crux of the problem. And for that, I apologize, even though I had nothing to do with it, I can't help you. You didn't my goal, report. <laughs> my, goal, my goal is to try to help you guys going forward. So I ask for patience, I ask for any help that if you have, like, like I said, please, if, if there's any silver lining, please be proactive. You can all help yourself if you block your three credit scores, you keep track of your expenses, and if and when the adjuster gets in touch with you or you have information, please report it to your, your, your direct department head the direct department head will report it to HR, who will report it to the commissioners and or myself. And, and if we all cooperate, it will go much smoother. Going forward, is there any way of keeping that office out of HR issues? Can you guys pass an ordinance as commissioners to you deal with HR issues? So this would never happen again. Is that something that could be done through an ordinance? That's a legal question. I, I'm, I gotta be careful what we say here until we get answers from our I, I can't answer that right now without researching it. I'm, I'm sorry, but. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant, but I also, meaning like, I know you can get, you can get life off on your own, but uh, I don't know if maybe like a big deal like this could get even more of a discount or like when we sign up for benefits, that is something else we can sign up. Anybody else? I'm not trying to rush it. I just, like I said, there's a lot 
lot of things going on in the background that we're working on. So, are we going to be kept up to speed? Appreciate it. So basically, the only thing we can do right now is that's all I can tell you right now. <coughs> so I know what information is, how it's used, where yeah. it's used. I mean. I, <coughs> I, I would love to stand here and say, hey, this is going to be offered, it's going to be that. But if I, I extend myself, then it, it potentially, you know, makes yeah. my insurance company. Do it. I just want to make sure I'm doing the right things. It's, you can you do your job and I can keep my information safe. I understand that, and I appreciate that. Yeah, very Thank good. You. So why really isn't that elected official here at this meeting? She's a, an elected official. You guys hold, you guys hold accountability. Why ain't, why ain't they here at this meeting to answer? Check with your department heads. I'm not sure how to get hold of everybody easily unless we get Christina and Oz and, and, and send out emails to everybody. But we'll probably send department heads out so that you guys, your department heads, are, you know, I mean, I'm hoping, I mean, this is Monday morning. I'm hoping maybe today or tomorrow we can get a, some type of update from the insurance company or his adjuster or board's head. And as soon as we get stuff, we, we will update everybody. Did you say you have some information on how to do that? Would you send that all to all, either HR or our department heads, or she, she can relay it out. Send it to her. That way, everybody gets it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Anything else on on this right now? We're here to answer questions. Yeah. Okay. Thank Thank you. 
Does anybody hear what concerns all that? Third reading. Hearing none, I entertain a motion then to approve resolution 02030. I'll make the motion. Second. Then I had a fee waiver uh, for the habitat for a $175 application fee for a variance and $50 zoning permit. I can't think of the address off the top of my head. The brand has the paper, but they had demoed the house and they want to rebuild it, but they had to apply for a variance. It's 1016 Water Street. 1016 Water Street. Motion to uh, approve the fee waiver. And I talked with Brian. I sent the interlocal agreement over to the city. Um, I have not been able to get the steam driver's signature on it. However, when I considered it, it was just Brian's signature. Um, so obviously, it wasn't paid by January. Clean here in the annex over the weekend. Hope everybody can smell the difference. So, um, the core on the boiler that, that we talked about last year on getting replaced, and I encumbered the money across to this year. Um, I would like to get that started and have you guys sign this so that I could pay them a potential part of the money to get things ordered. Okay. Is that going to be a problem? Um, my next thing is, hang on a minute. I don't know. I mean, do, they, do they have any stated in here? Uh, okay. 
Okay, so I would think we can. We have uh, yeah. proposals in excess of 30,000. I'm talking about well, the encumbrances and he hasn't got the money appropriated yet. Well, he'll bring it back next meeting. Oh, well, okay. He'll bring it back next meeting. We're just signing here, accepting this proposal, and then we bill 50% of it. They'll give us an invoice for 50% of this. It's good. We can okay. sign this. Yeah. Okay. So, this is for uh, the boiler to courthouse. Yes. And it's just the work on the one. Right? It's just the one that we're replacing. Yeah. For $105,488. And that also includes the, I had two years to get stop switches installed on both boilers at this building and that building. It is a new code that they wrote, and that is a part of that also. It's like $1,500 uh, to put the stop switches in, so that's in part of the work. Because it's by law, we got to get it done now. So that's the 1388 yes. yes. Okay. I motion then to enter into this contract with four uh, mechanical services for the replacement of the water motor for $105,488. And the contract uh, with four mechanical services for the $1,358 for the emergency stop doors at the uh, these are those are just at the annex building. Yeah, just the yeah. stop switches are at the annex, and then there'll be stop switches installed when the new boiler goes in over there at the same time. So moved. Second. Okay. Is there any questions? Anybody? All right. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Yep. I'm sorry. Now the next thing I was going to go to is uh, Judge Heller asked me. Um, if he could get a half door and stub wall installed in his office in the Superior Court office. Um, all the other offices have like a like a detour of stopping someone from going all the way around their desks and into the office and walking through. He's the only one that doesn't have one and he's asked if I could get one for him. I got an estimate from uh, car construction and uh, it's $2,800 and I wanted to know if I could have the approval if it is in my budget. I could get that done. I just felt like it needs to be done. And I also brought that up in the safety and security meeting that me and Rick are on and Gail with that about a little bit about that. And moving on with that same thing over at the probation office. Um, when you walk in, uh, it's an open right there to all the girls, and it's kind of a unsafe area I guess you could say um, they've asked if I could get uh, something to tour them like a glass or something uh, where you can still speak through it and they can send the, the files through but it would block that area um, I got Rochester glass to give me an estimate on that and it's four thousand and eight dollars um, and I'm asking for your approval on the budget that I have at the probation office I have the money to do that and I'm asking if I can do that also and he's okay with it and I talked to Andy, and he was not on board at first, but he did come around when he realized that a lot of the stuff that the girls are talking about that involves other people, the other people out in the waiting room can hear it. So they were kind of on board after that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Uh, the next thing I got, um, Judge Lee got with me. Um, the seats. Um, in the jury, where the jury sits and the courtroom are coming apart, all the foam is showing, the red is, the material has ripped off, it looks kind of unprofessional. He would like to get those seats reupholstered. I got two um, companies to come in and give me estimates on that, and they're both within $15 of each other. I would like to go with Tempe Furniture. They will come, take it apart, take them up there, reupholster them, bring them back and put them in and they'll do it in the, the time that we ask them to do it, um, why like Judge Lee is on vacation or whatever. So I'm asking for that. Um, the price on that is $4,665. You paying for that out of your budget? Yes, I am. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Motion to approve. What's that? What was that last amount? Uh, $4,665. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Hey, John, how are you, Good morning, but it's a little late for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. <laughs> 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 <laughs
second one I got is from Joe Knotts. Uh, it's a driveway permit. Um, he's wanting to install a new driveway at 2721 uh, Old US 31 North. Um, and this is uh, to fill in uh, on the old uh, for driveway approximately a thousand feet north of Olson Road. Rick and I went out there and we talked to him, kind of came up with the game plan uh, to work that out. Okay. Two guys are happy to do Yes, I'm good. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Three And the last one I got here is uh, 24 4, and it's from uh, the Shankster Brothers. And they're wanting to uh, bore an eight inch tile, and this is going to be approximately eight foot deep under uh, 150 south. Uh, and it's about 540 feet west of five, uh, County Road 500 east. I don't have any problems with this. I talked to the contractor uh, last week.
original engineering estimate, but we had updated our estimate, and then the NDOT met that and still gave us the 80-20. Our match is $812,679, um, and there should be a claim for that uh, today in, in your docket. Um, <coughs> Our match is $812,679.17. Okay. Um, and then I sent you a copy of the LPA end up contract. I need the board's approval for me to electronically sign that for you. And get that in the end on. Just a boilerplate agreement, right? Yeah. Yep. I sent you a copy of it. I'll look at it by any chance you. I got your stuff this time. Good. So, yes, it's fine. So, so. Yeah. Do you go with it? I'm good with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'll make a motion. Second. Go ahead and sign it. So, we've got several uh, items on the uh, pipes that need to be changed along the that before the project starts, and then there's a creek on the end that you know about before we start that project. That's all yet to be done. Uh, and then um, on the 5th, which is this afternoon, uh, we're supposed to have a creek on meeting or a kickoff meeting with NDOT for Bridge 33. Um, and then um, still waiting for USI to complete the task order for the ADA, ADA Title VI Transition Plan. Uh, and USI is supposed to be getting with us, with uh, Christina Collins and I, on uh, the training for that, for the ADA Title VI. We're supposed to have that done, what, by April? Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, about the 1st of April, right, Christina? Sounds about right, doesn't it? Uh, so we'll be having training scheduled here soon. Um, I did want to talk to you today about spring bids for asphalt chip seal, calcium chloride. Last year we did March 3rd. Uh, we usually do that on a Friday. Uh, possible dates would be March 1st, 8th, and 15th. Any of them sound good to you? I might pick one. Yeah. March 1st sound good? Yeah, the first, the first one's good. Okay. March 1st? 10th, 10th. Yes, what we usually that works for you. Okay. And then uh, the last thing I want to ask you, um, I was talking to Carrie about it. We've got a truck out there, that old Ford flatbed we got from uh, Larry from EMA. We don't use it. It's a 550. We got it from Winnemac, uh, Glasgow County. We'd like to take it in the rolls and get rid of it. And then Carrie's having trouble with that Chevy that we gave him. <coughs> Transmission's about out of it. I think he'd like to take it over to Olson's and get rid of that too. We can have your blessings. The one you got from Winmac, is that an Army deal? Well, it was an Army deal, but it, it's a regular. So you got the title. Right? Right. Right. Yeah. We don't have the title for it. We never was able to obtain it. They don't have a title, so we have to sell without the title. It's, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah. We have the title for Carries truck, yeah. yeah. But we have to sell that one without a title. They could never provide us with one. We never had it. That's all. But we just like to get rid of it. We're going to swap out the new tires that are on the truck, though, and put them on one of his trucks so that we get the use out of the tires. The one that's on your pickup. Yeah, because it's got new tires. And I said I didn't want to sell them those new sure. tires on it. That's yep. yeah. So I have to reject it on one of the tires that are on it on one of our pickups. Sound like a plane. Other than that, that's all I have for you. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Mr. Fowles, mm -hmm. I'll make this short and sweet, guys. <clears throat> My purpose is just to let everybody know that we finally, after November of 2021, we finally got our brand new Ford SF Explorer. It's a 2023, had 500 total miles on it. Runs like champ, everything's great. So, just wanted to let you know that the county's money has been satisfied. Uh, that I was worried about that. There was 14,000 of donations, and I can't say I'm going to thank everybody who's made a donation to the DAV band. It made it possible for our veterans to go to these VA or VA authorized medical facilities. So, thank you. 
thank the public, thank everybody that donated, and then all the all the donations, large or small, we really appreciate it. So that's all I have. Thank you for everything you do over there too. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much. Okay, Gail. What do you make? <laughs> Moving on, the 911 numbers and reports were sent down to the state auditor. Um, the auditor's office is supposed to file that as well, but um, I did those and those have been sent and approved. And um, that was the house like they're supposed to be. Um, for EMS, uh, we thought we were going to get. Um, that contract back into your guys' lap uh, last week, but you should have it this week, hopefully. Um, uh, Lutheran was reviewing mark changes and so forth, and then the two documents that you have before you, the one is um, they do need your signature, uh, Brian being the president, um, holding uh, the services that they currently are doing till March 1st, this is the, um, it's just a one pager. Yeah. yeah, so we need you to sign that. And then the other one with the lost document, we need you guys to re sign that and noticing that it did say Polk <coughs> County EMS, it does need to say Polk County Commissioners. If you can uh, initial that and sign that as well. Um, but that's Barry's continuous document uh, that has been approved quite some time ago. I thought we approved the Lutheran too, but just to be safe, maybe we'll get to it again. Correct. Uh, sure, you did do that in the beginning, uh, or I believe it was in December. Yeah, that was December. Really wanted, wanted to be that. safe, but I'm just positive right. we did. But. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You want to read it, but. Uh, just read you all the You're good. You're good. No, you're, you're good. good. You're good. Yeah. And if you could keep the originals in your office, we need to keep a binder, and then I will copy and send those out. Yeah. And then the Lutheran? Yeah, we have the Lutheran uh, Health Network. Uh, they're extending their contract on January 14th to 24 to March 1st of 24. Uh, so we get all our contract figured out. So they're still going to be here in the county. They're not falling out until we get this contract. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on that? Questions? All in favor? That motion carries through. Okay. And also going to auction, um, I reached out to the other EMs in the district and so forth um, in reference to the kitchen. We're trying to get that bay cleaned up um, out there at EMA. Uh, Stark County is interested in that. If they do not want to take it, I'd like to send that to Olson Auction as well. So, and then maybe a military truck or two. Um, the stuff's just sitting there and we're just uh, wasting our resources and money and keeping that stuff up. So, um, yeah, some of that stuff will be out the door. And then we'll be, you know, I don't know, um, just like the last one, some of them have titles, some of them do not. Yeah. So, and that's all I have, unless you have any questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, Jerry, Court. Thank you, Mr. President. 
Good morning. Mine will not be real lengthy today either. I just got a few data and statistics from last year and then this year too. Uh, last year's not complete yet because we still are waiting on a couple autopsy results. Um, I want you to know in Fulton County we had 202 people pass away <coughs> total in the county. And that doesn't mean they're all Fulton County citizens because they come here for different things and things can happen like that. But uh, there was 96 females and 106 males. Um, of those deaths in the county, uh, the Fulton County Coroner's Office investigated 78 deaths. So that's about 38% of all the deaths that occur in Fulton County. Of those, we have 51 natural, nine accidental, four suicide, and one undetermined. Um, let me see. We had a total of 11 autopsies in 2023, and in 2024, it was quite busy in January. We had eight families that we served, and we actually had uh, three calls within 24 hours. Two of those calls were within 15 minutes, and there was uh, three of the coroners, or two of the deputies and me, all working on those calls at the same time, but we made it pretty smooth and seamless, and of course, we always get great help from our Lutheran EMS and our law enforcement departments that help us. So it kind of keeps things smooth and running along. Um, Friday I'll be going to the coroner's training board meeting. Um, that'll be upcoming. We're making our final plans for our event this summer for education in Indianapolis. Um, and I guess that's about it. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Deb. I'm, I was going to go to attend an <coughs> ARPA meeting okay. afterwards. Okay. I don't know if I need to bring nope. it up here, too. No. no okay. No, no. Rachel, did you have anything to No. Here? Okay. No. Travis? Sure. I'll be super quick. Um, this morning we had 86 inmates. Of those 15 are federal, 19 were both Wabash County, 14 DOC inmates. Um, I just outlined those because those are all that we're charging for and we're making money on. So um, we did applicant testing for a deputy's position on Saturday. We sent out six letters, six people actually showed up. Of those, we've got three pretty good ones that uh, continue on throughout that. Um, we're working on getting AEDs and all the patrol vehicles. We've got a lot of them are equipped now. We just need to get a few more, so we're working with some monies with that, trying to get that finished up to where all the uh, patrol cars will have uh, AEDs in them. Um, they opened up the uh, bid process for uh, Chevy Tahoes for three days. We were able to we were able to order two of them. They're going to replace the K-9 vehicles. We don't have a build date yet for them, so I don't know if it'll be spring, summer, winter, but they assure us that we're going to get them. So. Um, we have, or we're in the process of hiring for the uh, special deputy SRO. Um, position the school was able to um, figure out the, the funding sources on that so that'll start towards the end of the month um, he'll have a couple months in with Mitch Scott who's the current SRO in there to, to train up with that we'll have to send him to SRO school then over the summer but then he'll be ready to rock and roll come August um, that's all I've got so you guys have any questions what was the what was the Miami County in Lake Shore? I mean, 19 for Wabash County yeah, 15 federal, 19 Wabash County, 14 DOC. 15 federal? 15 federal, yep. Thanks. Nice. I, I missed that. <laughs> I buzzed through it, so I apologize. <laughs> the, the car got wrecked with the top of it, place that, or have you? you no, know? I mean, it's, no, the 2K9 vehicles are the next up. The car that got wrecked was actually one of our older cars that was a pool vehicle. Oh. Um, because James Dillon was the one that was driving that. He disappeared back in December. So it was in getting fixed and he was in the, the sedan. So um, it did kind of change of things because we were hoping to, to have that vehicle, it's a cool vehicle. So um, we'll make it work. So. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Kind of a rundown of what's been going on in IT the last couple of weeks. We were able to finish the new servers. 
Um, with the X-Rail that we purchased earlier, uh, towards the fourth quarter of last year, we were able to put in place fire up, get that running. We moved about 57 virtual servers over to that new unit. We still have a couple of virtual servers running on the old. Um, we are going to migrate those with the new operating system over to the new, and we'll be able to snuff on everything and we'll decommission the old units. The old units we have talked in the past, and I mentioned to you the fact that I need to have those units just go to waste. There's a lot of money there. I've talked with Michael. Michael has mentioned to me that he's willing to sit there and uh, kind of go over what our plans are with it to make sure that we're in compliance with the insurance company from a cybersecurity standpoint should we continue to utilize those, those, those pieces of equipment. That's where we're at with that. Um, security office, I know Brian, you've asked about that, and Guido and uh, Travis. Security office, we have the monitors, Kerry was able to put the, the mounts up and get that ready to go. We've got the server now that we've taken the old server. Um, a lot of the, the peel parts of that had to decommission that. We're able to remove some of those over. We're gonna have a viewer server for the courthouse security that will provide the feed to all the monitors in their office uh, so they don't have to worry about messing with that um, the other thing that we're working on is the website. They sat in with us on the website. We're getting ready to ramp that up. Um, they're going to start on the next request immediately um, and then have a kickoff meeting with some of the key people for the actual website itself. We've also sent in the information to register for a .gov domain. Uh, that opened up last week, so we're working on that. We're going to look at moving away from our co.falton.in.us domain to a faltonin.gov domain. Um, so that will make things a little bit more simplistic when people are giving email addresses out because right now it's pretty difficult to sit there and rattle all my information off. Um, the other thing that I wanted to entertain and just kind of put in your ear, projects like this, I know they're not on a monthly basis, but I remember when Devin started out, he was an intern on a part-time status, I do believe. Wanted to see if you guys had any interest from a part-time talking to some of the schools and looking at getting possibly an intern with very low hours to come in and, and kind of help us in certain situations. I'm just throwing it out there. It's not something that I'm completely asking for, but just putting a bug in here to see what, what the thoughts would be. Um, other than that, that's about all I've got right now. If you're available on the 14th, right? Yes. At 8.30? Yes. Yep. And, then, and then the other thing I want to let you know too is uh, Crossroad GIS. Gail and I have been working with the individual, uh, Neil Sexton. He's got started on that. Um, so they're working on building up a map for spillover. Thank you, Josh. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, well, I just have a couple things. Um, we got the grant from the state, from the Secretary of State's office, and we're getting some new signage for the polling places. Um, several of our signs have blown away in the wind over the years, so we just needed to update some of that and make it um, show, I have this flag bell showing that we're all ADA accessible. Um, so we got that, and then um, just wanted to update you on Laura working remote has worked great. It's been a huge help to us. And then um, we have Stacy McGriff that started last week in Nancy's position. Nancy moved to the prosecutor's office, and so we had that position open for a while too, and we got that filled. Thanks, Casey. We stole Stacy from her, yeah, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> but we really do appreciate her. So. And she's been there a week and doing great. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I, I emailed it out a little while ago, but we haven't had an XOF contract for 15 years, which is my lender. Uh, I did bring a copy and, and gave it to you, even though I already emailed it. Uh, that contract actually satisfies the uh, DLGF's uh, requirements, which they had requested in January that all the assessors upload their contract, which is how 
I realized we didn't have a contract. So uh, my vendor uh, got one together and I, I brought it forward to you to see if you could sign it. Uh, pending your signature, I do have our bill for $24,095, which <coughs> is in my budget to cover that. Uh, we have uh, six people that use that and, and the contract basically is just covering what is covered for the support and maintenance and honestly there's nothing they wouldn't or don't do for us so uh, it's you know, just a formality at this point so I'm hoping you sign that. Okay. So all your good okay. Bye. And this is, uh, when's the effective date on that? The first of the year? It's the first of the year. Okay. okay. And then we to enter the contract uh, for the support maintenance agreement between Fulton County and the for the assessor. Okay. Second. Any questions? All clear? Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, I just want to let you know, which if you want to look at it, I can give it to you. But the state sent me my compliance letter, so all of the 2023 sales that happened in our county went well. Uh, all my information died to them, so uh, the next thing I'll do is a ratio study for it. Uh, I would like to ask your blessing that I could go ahead and start the process for me to set up my mobile assessing office that will happen during Form 11 time. Uh, it seemed to work out good the last time I did it, so I'd like to be able to have four, I don't have those dates for you, but set up four after hours uh, assessing times that are in various locations in our community where people can come and see me between 5 and 8. If you're okay with that, I'd like to do that again. Yeah, I've heard good things about that. I think people appreciate that. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. 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 All right, that's yeah. all yeah. I have. So, oh, yeah, you. I need a nap. Okay. Chad, tell me. difference but I mean I have it in my budget and I or I think the service will be way better than what it, it does just, it specifically it, state that you can cancel it for any reason well it says It says either the customer or TV Mechanical Inc. can at any time cancel this agreement with a 30 day written notice. Okay. So, you're good with it? Yeah. I would like to do that. That's what you want. you need to do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then you'll, after you do that, then you'll bring that contract to us or the other the contract or what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did, did you bid that to anybody else? Or? So originally, I did, I did three companies, which was TP Core, and then OJS. They were out of uh, Plymouth. But the second time, I did not. I think we need to bid it. Okay. How many?
Did you say the TIF meeting was February 16th at 9 a.m. at the Learning Center? Yes. Thank you. Do you remember that for 30 seconds now? <laughs> Stop it. Okay, do we have uh, Resolution 01162024? Uh, resolution to enter into a corporate agreement with the Fort Wayne Housing Authority to participate in the Hoosier Homes Program. And this again is at no cost to the county. No cost to the county, all it does is allows the hub, as they're called, to come into the county and run this program. All that program does is it helps subsidize costs for um, new and continuing <coughs> homeowners to uh, purchase homes, closing costs, things like that. It's just an additional fee for them. Makes it home ownership easier. That's third and final, right? This is third and final. Right? Yeah. Uh, I think I'll make that motion. I'll okay. second. Okay. Do I have anybody here commenting on this? Questions, concerns? Okay. All clear. Motion carries 3 0. Okay. 
say that we have uh, funding agreements. Personal policy, I just have it on here. Uh, make sure that you guys, can, you guys look it over. I sent that to you. Uh, if you have any questions, Phil. And who else is on that? Ryan. Ron is on the uh, personal committee. If you have questions, uh, we, can, we can address those concerns. And, uh, so, if you guys had a chance to look at the travel request, mm -hmm. you'll hear those. I entertain a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Um, we have the minutes. You guys look at the minutes. We have minutes from December 29th. Motion to uh, enter, uh, entertain a motion <laughs> <laughs> to accept the December 29th minutes. So moved. Second. All approved. Motion carries. January 16th minutes. Okay, I think we should approve. So moved. Uh, she's on. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Three of Finished on January 19th. Had a chance to look over the financials, claims, transfers, appropriations. Are there any questions, concerns? Yes, other than uh, the one was left off for Casey that we're going to go ahead and approve. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So, in addition to that, is the uh, XSOF invoice for $24,095. I need a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. All favor? Motion carries. Payroll claim for one twenty six of two hundred seventy eight thousand five hundred thirty four dollars and forty two cents. Payroll deduction of one hundred eighteen thousand five hundred eighty four dollars fifty eight cents. And we have a consolidated union two hundred ninety four thousand one hundred seventy one dollars for who? <laughs> you don't earn it. You don't earn it. Okay, we have utilities for nine thousand seven hundred eighty-nine dollars and fifty-three cents. We have uh, the twenty twenty-four funding agreements we just passed for one hundred one thousand dollars total. January credit card, $11,021.55. We have uh, N95 
not our match that John was, uh, talked about earlier, $812,679.17. Miscellaneous claim for February 5th, $272,056.33. Is there a transfer? <coughs> Soil and water. $6,295 to contractual services from some various line items. Resolutions. Okay, we have uh, the health department for three hundred and thirty dollars. Supplies and other charges. <coughs> we have to. Uh, That's that. You got to vote on each one. Necessary to appropriate more money than was appropriated in the annual budget. Now, therefore, Section 1, be it resolved by the Fulton County, by the Council of Fulton, Indiana, that the expenses of the taxing unit, the following additional sums of money are hereby appropriated out of the funds named and for the purpose specified, subject to laws of governing the state. Okay, first one we have the help <coughs> $330. Entertain a motion to approve. Approve. Second. All in favor? Carries three out. Okay. Second appropriation resolution. Um, same. This is from local road street. Safety share for forty four thousand one hundred and forty two dollars. So moved. Second. All in favor? All in favor. Yeah, it's all right. All right. That's your same appropriation on uh, motor vehicle highway for twenty two thousand five hundred and twenty one dollars. Resolution for the 
Clark non reverting operating costs for $902. So, motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. <coughs> Corporation resolution for the quarters, records, and perp perpetuation fund, $1,120. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. Senate resolution for reassessment, $19,984. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. Couldn't get writer's cream. Same resolution uh, for lit uh, rehab facilities, $10,446. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. Same resolution for lit dedicated PSAP, $2,550. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. What was that? Could you read that. read that again? $2,550. For what? It's the lit dedicated to PSAP. Other services and charges. Okay. I'd like to look at it when you're done at the end of the meeting. Why don't you look at it now and we'll come yeah. back to it. Yeah. It's a communication location. Banking area will cost us a lot of Come out of your 23 encumbrance. Did you have that covered in 23? Sorry to hold up the process, but I'm not. Move on while she's. Resolution for uh, Convention of Terrorism, $16,182. Motion to approve. Second. You may be reading your response. You might be reading mine? Good. Go for it. No, we've got a sign price on it. We'll correct it. Um, down here. Yeah, whatever. We've Okay. Yeah. So we have the resolution for the visitor tourism for $16,180. For uh, the county general, $363,838. Um, it's for. These are still appropriations, yes? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay. You know, why not? So, list, so list, everything list underneath that. Around, right okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Banking here. Okay, we have the resolution for the edit, $1,726. Oops. Very plain. So it's going to banking ears. These are all banking ears. Guarantee mm -hmm. motion to approve. $240. It's cleaning up money from the application for the white three. It's cleaning up. Second. It's cleaning up. It has nothing to do with you. 
It's, it's from the sheriff, IT, and courthouse. Bill, you know, two hundred and seventy-nine thousand five hundred thirty-six dollars. I do not, but it it it's just to clear up the books, so it's okay. So it's, okay. It out, so it's it it's okay. For, from what I understand, with with the budgets last year or for this year, they put it they put it both in lit and. And in another place. I think that's what this is doing is cleaning it up. It's cleaning up everything uh, from 23. That's what that's what yeah, you're doing. You got to vote where to take this out. You can't just pull. She can't just pull that county those people out going through a PD. Well, she got to go through these guys. Right? Yeah. Oh, all this stuff will eventually come okay. to us. Yeah. We are having a motion to approve. Yeah. Second. I, I can't contest it. It's something out of my hands, so okay. I can't I can't explain anything. Okay, we have the uh, dedicated piece out for two thousand five hundred fifty dollars. So moved. Now, 
Um, Holly? No. Old business? Anybody? New business work? Dave? Holly? No. Anybody new business? Sorry. Entertain motion to recess. So moved.